In this video, we're going to talk about binary files. Inside of a computer, everything is binary, zeros and ones, and everything we've done up till now, CS102, CS101, or whatever you happen to take, has been using text files, where each character is read or written to a file. Now, each character is eight bits, so that's one byte a piece, but it still is binary, zeros and ones being stored inside the computer. The only difference is, is a text file has a defined structure to it, where each byte is actually one character. However, in many other types of files, like a JPEG file or uh, HTML file, I mean, that's text, but some other type of file, executable file, something like that, the zeros and ones have their own structure. And so that's what we're talking about when we say binary files. We actually have to put the structure behind the file because we're just given a sequence of zeros and ones. Unlike text files where we're just given one byte at a time, which is a character, a character, and character. And as we scrunch those together and make all these characters combined, we get text out of it. So let's take a look at our learning objectives. We're gonna understand what it means by the term stream. Now you should have learned that in CS102, but we'll, re we'll recapture what that means here because we're going to use C style files. So not if stream, off stream. Instead, we're gonna use F read, F write, that sort of stuff. Be able to open binary file for reading. Be able to read several bytes from a bi binary file into a buffer. A buffer is just a space where you can put stuff. It's just memory, that's all it is. And be able to seek to a given offset in a binary file. Be able to write several bytes to a binary file from a buffer. Be able to get the size of a file by seeking to the end of the file stream. So that might not be one thing you've done before, but to actually get the size of a file, you can seek all the way to the end of a file and take a snapshot. Hey, where am I? And that tells you the exact same, the number of bytes inside of that file. And be able to tell where you are anywhere inside the file stream. So we're going to use C style files, and these are included in that CSTDIO library. So once again, let's talk about what a binary file is. So a binary file, once again, is, let me open up the whiteboard so that I can draw this out. So everything we've done up till now, once again, has, I'm, if I say once again, damn, again, <laughs> so we have A, B, C, D. So if you remember, this is one character, this is one character, this is one character, and this is one character, where each character is eight bits. So that's eight zeros and ones stuck together. And so we could read this file easily because all we do is read eight bits at a time. We read these eight bits, we decode what it is, we look in that ASCII table, A-S-C-I-I, -I, we look in that table to see what that number corresponds with and we get lowercase a. However, in a binary file, these bits can mean something different. So we could have 010101 and that would be the length of a picture or something like that, or the width of a picture, or the height of a picture. In fact, in this class, you're going to be doing something like that. I have different labs for binary files, but you'll be doing something where you read a specific portion of it, but you have to know the structure. If anyone knows, you can't open a WAV file with a JPEG reader because they're different formats. And so what the difference is between a the file that you've been using before and these binary files is you are the one that is actually putting the format to it. And you'll see we can use some helpers inside of C++, such as a structure or something like that, to actually read whole contents of it. But we can actually do it manually as well by seeking to a certain location, reading a number of bytes that we want. So just like uh, char or any other kind of memory access, the smallest addressable unit we have inside of a binary file is one byte. So if we want to read one bit, we have to go to that byte where that bit's located, read it, and then do our test set clear, in this case test, to see what that bit is. So let's take a look at all the different new functions that we're going to use. So once again, this is in the CSTDIO header. You can also include stdio.h, but in C++ they want you to put the C in front of it. So we have F open, that stands for file open, and that's actually how we're going to open files now in C style. F close, that's analogous to F open. F seek, that allows us to move anywhere within this file. We can seek backwards, we can seek forward, we can seek anywhere we want. F tell, that tells us where we are located inside the file. So once again, remember our, one of our learning objectives was to seek to the end, so we'll use F seek to seek to the end, and then take a snapshot of where we are. So we'll use F tell to tell us where we are inside the file stream, and that will tell us the size of the file. We have F read. So let's just, whenever we're reading a file, F read, we give it certain parameters that says, here's where I want you to put it in that buffer, that memory location. Here's where I want you to read, and, or here's how much I want you to read, and there you go. F write is analogous to that, where we actually want to store to a file. So remember, F read is from file into memory, whereas F write is from memory into file. F printf and F scanf, we're not going to use those too much, but those are basically 
Remember, there's printf and scanf. So in this case, fprintf allows us to print to a file. Now, you generally we use fprintf and fscanf just for text files. And so in this lecture, we're using binary files. So let's skip those for now. So opening and closing files is now going to be performed by using fopen. Okay, so fopen looks like this. It takes two parameters. So the very first parameter is a string literal or it can be any kind of string. Now, the only thing it can't be because these are C style is a C++ style string. So we have to give it some sort of string. So let me open up the kernel here. So I'll show you if you haven't seen this in CS102. Now remember in CSTDIO, we don't have to use namespace STD, but because I'm using string, I need to use that in here. So let's say string my file equals this dot bin. Okay, because it's a binary file. So there we go, we've got that. Now, fopen uses a file pointer. So f file star fl. And what this is, is it's what's called an opaque structure. We don't actually care what's in the file, but that's what we're going to refer into the operating system and say, here's the file that we want to use. And so it returns from the fopen function. So fopen takes two parameters. Once again, it's going to be the string. So remember, this is not going to work because that's a C++ style string and these are C style functions. And then the second one is what's called a mode. So this is kind of strange, but you're going to type in RB and what that stands for is read binary. So if you want to write to the file, we do WB. So in this case, let's write to a binary file. So it's WB. Now I always, because after we open, we want to close, I always just go ahead and put it in there and then start typing in the middle. Otherwise I'm going to forget. It's just like parentheses. You'll notice if I put a left parentheses, I always put a, left, a right parentheses because I was during the, I, I grew up during the time where we didn't have IDs and stuff like that. And I always got lost. I had to count parentheses. So F open, just go ahead and put F close in there. So FL, F open will return a pointer to a file. So that's what that file structure is right here. But if it fails, it's going to return what's called null pointer. So we always, just like if streams and off streams, we always want to make sure that the file open. Okay, so if we get null pointer from there, so there is another null called null. In C++, you're not supposed to use this because they created null pointer for you. So in this case, we'll just say uh, file could not be opened. So there is another function called p error, and let me show you what that does. p error and we'll just do my file, okay? Now, once again, this is not gonna work because PR is a C style string, or C plus, PR is a C style function using a C plus plus style string, so it's not gonna work. So let's go ahead and try to compile this. Okay, there we go. So the very first thing is it can't convert a standard string into a const char star. So if you know what a const char star is, that's a C style string. So there is a way inside of C++. Now I'm, I'm assuming none of you have seen this, but you might have. So in a C++ style string, we can use the member access operator, the dot operator, and do C underscore str. That says, give me a C style string. And we're going to do that for both here. And there you go, it works. So now that I've done that, notice that this dot bin shows up, but it's empty. So it's got zero bytes inside of it. Just like an off stream, as soon as I open a file for writing successfully, it actually creates that file. And if I don't put anything in it, it's going to be empty. That's why we always want to close a write file because if our program crashes, what we wrote to the file will not be there because it's what's called buffered inside the operating system. So now if we get to this point right here, we know that the file opened successfully because we passed that check. So now what we want to do is remember we're opening this file for writing. So let's go ahead and take some data that we want to write. So let's go ahead and say, enter a double value. So once again, I'm not going to error check this just for the sake of time, but you want to make sure that you error check all scans, that sort of stuff. Okay. So I'm going to get a value. We're going to say what that value is. You entered. Okay. And now what I want to do is I want to write this to the file and you'll see why, because what we're going to do is we're going to write this to the file and then we're going to read it right back out to see if we get the same thing on both ends. So we're going to read and write to this, this file, but first we have to write to it so that we have something to read. So what we're going to do is use what's called F write. Now F write will return the number of members. Now I'm not going to show you that yet until we get to that actual location but it's very 
you have to follow along with what I'm doing here. So I'm giving you some hints and saying, okay, this value is always one. So let's go ahead and just do it. So F right takes, what is it, four or five parameters? So I guess I can look, <laughs> let's see. So F right takes a buffer size, number, so four different things. So the first thing we need is a buffer. It's just a memory location that we're going to store. Now remember, F right is read from memory, store in a file. So the buffer that I want is the memory address of the value. So the reason we call it a buffer instead of a value is because if I type in value, it's the double, right? But we don't want to write the actual double. So we want to write the memory location because F right, what it'll do is go to that memory location, read what's in there, and then store that into a file. So there we go. So we're storing the address of value. The next thing you're always going to type is one. So if you look here, it's the size. And then the number, this next one is number of members. So we're gonna type one there for. So for size, you're, I'm sorry, not one, but for size, you're always going to put one. Here's the reason. So F write will return the number of members that was able to write, the number of members. So in this case, a double is eight bytes. We wanna write eight bytes. So we say the number of members is eight. So if we put the size is eight and we want to write one of those, well, what are we going to get returned from F right? The, the answer is one. We're going to get the value one. So that doesn't really make any sense to my mind. Instead, I like to see how many bytes we were able to get back. And so what I do is I always set the size to one. And then the number of members equals to the size that I want to store, the number of bytes. That way there, whenever we get a return value from F right, we say, ah, here's the number of bytes I was able to write. And we can compare those to see whether it successfully wrote or not. And then we give it the file that we want to write to. Okay, so let's take a look at this. Let's enter double net value 77.65. And it says you entered 77.65. Let's go ahead and take a look at this dot bin. Notice now it has eight bytes stored into it. So we were able to actually do something. Let's go ahead and hex dump it. Now you'll actually learn in floating point what all this means. But here is the eight byte value that we've got. Now it's stored in what's called little ending, so it's actually stored backwards. So it's four zero five three six nine 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 A. So we'll see how that works whenever we get into floating point and see how we actually get this value from 77.65. But there you go. So now we've actually stored it into the file. So let's go ahead and write bin read to see if we can read it back out and get the same value. I call it test this dot bin. I should really remember. Okay, so remember when I'm writing to a file, we used WB. In this case, since I'm reading from a file, we use RB. So it says open this file for reading binary. If I was to open it for writing again, it would overwrite the file just like an off stream. So remember, always error check. Okay, so now what we're going to do is read from this file. So let's go double value again, so there's nothing inside there. And what I'm going to do is use F read. Now it has the same parameters, except now what we're gonna do is go from the file into memory. So I give the memory address a value, remember size is always one, and we're going to use eight for eight bytes of value. And then we read from FL. So let me show you what this actually does. So we're gonna go long, ret, so that's the return value, f read returned, okay, that way there you actually get to see, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to swap those around afterward and see what we get, okay, f read returned 8, very good, so that means it actually read 8 bytes from the file, let's go and swap this around where size is 8 and number of members is 1, and you'll see exactly why I tell you, there you go, one. So I like to get number of bytes back, that way there we know exactly what's going on. If you did the size as eight and the number of members is one, you just get the value one. And to me, it doesn't make any sense. It might to you, but it doesn't make much sense to me to get the number of members. Instead, I like to get the number of bytes that we're able to read.
Okay, so there we go. We're going to print the value that we read from this fread. Remember, fread just returns the number of bytes that we were able to read. And I'm going to say fread return this, which is the doubles value. Okay, and so we should get that 77.65 back out. So fread returned 8, which is the double value 77.65. There we go. So that is how fread and fwrite are going to work. So remember, we're putting a structure to this. We can actually move inside the file and say, here's what we're storing here, here's what we're storing here. So we have to be very careful when we do this that we are in the right location. Because if we're off by just one byte, everything is ruined. So we saw how we open and close files, fopen. Fopen takes two parameters. The first one is going to be a C style string. Remember, if you have a C++ style string, you have to convert it using dot C underscore str. The second one is called the mode. Now the B we're got always added there because we're dealing with binary files. But if we do RB, that stands for read for binary. That means we wanna go from the file into memory. Or we could use WB, which stands for write binary. That means we're going from memory into binary. And remember, I always add the F close and don't forget to double check. It's N-U-L-L-P-T-R, all one word, all lowercase. Okay, we also saw how to read and write. We used F read and F write. So F write, remember, in this case, I always say set this to one. Why? Because we wanna get the number of bytes back that was actually able to be written. So let's look at size of. So everything I've done up till now has been hard code in the number of bytes that we want to write. Because in my mind, I know a double is eight bytes, I just hard coded eight in there to say, okay, let's write eight bytes. But let's go ahead and change this into a structure. Remember I said in the beginning of this lecture, we can actually read and write structures so that we read whole lots of data and not just one double or one integer. So let's create a structure. Let's give it an int a a char b, a double c, and I don't know, float j, something like that, okay? So now this structure has multiple data, data fields inside of it, and it's gonna be a little bit harder. Now I'll show you in assembly, when we get to assembly, how we actually can calculate the size of these, but it's not as simple as just adding everything up. So it looks like the int is four, the char is one, so that's five plus eight plus four, but it's not. The, the structure actually moves by the compiler to make it more efficient. So let's take a look at how we can actually write something like this. Okay, so we're going to error check, do all that sort of stuff. But now instead of writing this, I wanna write a structure. So I'll call it ms for my struct, that sort of stuff. So let's do ms.a equals 100, ms.b equals c. I don't know, I'm just randomly putting in values right now. Is 1.25 and then ms.j equals 7.75 okay just like i said random numbers because I, the important part is to show you how this is going to work so let's get the return value out of f right we're going to write the address of ms remember ms right here is a value it's not a pointer or anything like that but we need to convert it into a pointer so we get the address of it using the address of operator the ampersand and what this is going to do is once again remember f right can write large swaths of data so we're saying go to this memory address and start writing whatever's in there until you exhaust the number of bytes we told you always put one for the size and then here's the hard part we need to know how many bytes we want to write now c will actually make this easy because we have what's called a compile time function called size of and what we can do is we we can provide it ms. We can also provide it the name of the data type, my struct, or ms, or something like that. So it's very easy because as long as it's known at compile time, C can look at it and say, okay, you want the size of ms, this structure here. So notice I no longer hard coded the number of bytes. Like I did that double, I said eight bytes. Well, we can actually say size of double or size of value to get the number of bytes out of it. And then we want to do fl. So in this case, now I'm going to do an error check. Okay, and so we're just, we do an error check just to see whether something went wrong. Okay, so now let's go ahead and run this. Okay, it ran, let's see what we get. So notice it's 24 bytes. 
Once again, we said there's a char, an int, a double, and a float. So 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. If we just did it manually, we'd think it'd be 17 bytes, but actually it's 24. That's because, and we'll see how that works in the assembly lecture. So now let's take a look at this dot bin and write the bin reader. Once again, we have to write the structure. Actually, I'm just gonna copy over. And let's just switch the direction so I don't have to rewrite all that. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is switch the direction into read. There we go. So now notice I'm just reading from it. So let's take a look at what everything is when we're done with it. Print F ms.a, which is the integer. So notice what I'm doing. Number one, I'm opening it for reading, RB. I error check it, always error check it. Then I read from it. Now this is where error checking is really important because we wanna make sure that we read the entire structure. If we didn't, one data field could be correct, the other data field might be wrong. And then we print out what each field is going to be. So let's run our bin reader. And notice we get 100, capital C, 1.25, 7.75, which is exactly what we wanted it to be. So notice we can, so the important part here is we can use the size of operator to get the size of primitive data types. I can do size of int or even structures that we've got. Here's one pitfall that we might run into. Okay, so let's write so.cpp size of. So there's nothing you have to include for size of. It's built into C++. I'm only including CSTDIO so that I can use printf. So let's do something like this. Uh, int star a, int b, okay? Okay, so here's the important thing to know. Now, most of you will probably realize that this is a pointer. And in CS102, you might've heard that pointers are eight bytes. And so, a lot of you might think if I do size of A, I will get the size of an integer, but it's not correct. Notice the size of A is eight. Why? Because A is a pointer. We're getting the memory address. Remember, pointers points to a memory address, and in 64-bit machines, all memory address are 64 bits, eight bytes. So in this case, don't fall into that trap. If you see a pointer, make sure that you dereference the pointer inside of the compile time. Now this looks like it's going to crash because int star a is garbage. But remember, size of is completed at compile time. So we're not actually dereferencing a, we're just saying, okay, size of, instead of giving me the pointer size, give me what the pointer points to size. And in this case, it's an integer. And notice we get size of a is four, size of b is equal to four. So that's one pitfall that you might run into, but just be careful whenever you use pointers and size of. Now, a lot of times you will use pointers because you have to use dynamic memory to read a large file, the new and delete, that's your dynamic memory. So that's kind of important for you to understand because you don't wanna mess that up. All right, so let's take a look at file positions. Now, there are two things that we wanna do here, seeking and telling. Seeking takes three parameters. So let's take a look at those three parameters that seeking allows us to do. So seeking right here will take the file stream first. So this is the hard part because F read and F write, the file goes last. However, in most everything else, the file goes first. So the file's here first, that's going to be FL. Offset is a positive or negative number or zero. And then the whence is where do you wanna start calculating the offset? So we actually have three whences, seek set, that means whatever number I put in the offset, that's the byte that we're gonna go to. We have seek n, that means we seek from the end of the file, so your offset will be negative so you can work back up, or seek cur, so wherever current location we're in, we can seek backwards or forwards from that. So let's take a look, let's go into ours. Okay, so now when I open a file, we're always gonna be at file position zero. So let's take a look at this. 
So FTEL, remember, will say, here's exactly where you're located. And notice we're at zero. So whenever we open a file, read binary, write binary, something like that, we always start at the top of the file. And that makes sense. So now what I'm going to do is remember, this is a 24 byte file. So let's seek to the char, which we have to skip four bytes. So if I do F seek, remember the file stream comes first. I want to skip four bytes and I want to do a seek set. So just like arrays, we start at index zero. So notice when I open the file, we were at index zero. So that first integer bytes zero, one, two, and three are for that integer. Remember, integers are four bytes. So bytes zero, one, two, and three are the integer. Then we get to the char, which is actually starting at byte four. So then let's go ahead and F read a char, call it G, whatever. Let's do size of just for the heck of it. And then FL print F. Okay, so notice we go to zero, chart is C. Well, let's make sure that that actually does what we want to. So if I take out this F seek, we're gonna start at the beginning, which is where that integer is. So let's take a look at what happens, chart is D. Well, that's not the char that we wanted. So instead we seek four bytes. So let's go open up this whiteboard. So inside of our binary file, remember we wrote it integer first, so that's four bytes. One, two, three, and four, okay? Then we wrote a char second, that's just one byte, and that was C, right? And then we wrote a double, which was eight bytes. And then we wrote a float, which was four bytes, okay? So what happens when I first open the file? Well, our file pointer is set here. And so when I do an F read, we read whatever value this is into a char. And so remember the ASCII table is how we take the number in that char and actually convert it into the character. So whatever was in there is actually the lowercase d. So when we skip four bytes, we skip one, two, three, four. And we're actually put down here, right? Why? Because remember, this is index zero, index one, index two, index three. So if we want to go to index four, I would seek to index four. So now let's see how we can do something like this. So once again, this is a file stream. So as soon as I read the C, our file stream will be advanced and we're actually looking at the double. So we've taken a look how we can seek and how we can tell. Remember F tell, we'll just say, here's the current position you're in. And remember it's zero base index. So that's the important thing to remember. It's zero based index, just like arrays. So seeking, there are three ways we can seek. We, we can seek set, which means I wanna set the absolute where we wanna go. So if we seek set to zero, that means we're going to go to the top of the file. If we seek set to whatever this file length is, we're gonna seek set at the, the end of the file. There's also seek cur, which in the offset will be based on where the current location is. And then there's seek n, in which the, the offset is negative generally, in which we can look at the end of the file and seek upwards. So one thing I wanna show you is how we actually get the size of a file. And that's fairly straightforward in that we f seek and we want to seek from the end. So remember the very first thing that comes first is the file pointer, zero and then seek end. So remember we had a 24 byte file. Let's see if we get that back. Okay, there we go. Size of file is 24. So let's take a look at our learning objectives, make sure we got them all. So understand what the term stream means. Remember, whenever we read a char, it moves on, just like an in-stream and off-stream. As soon as we read or write something, we move within the file. Now we can seek back and forth if we, if we don't move where we want to go, but it still moves as we read and write. That's why it's called the stream. Be able to open a binary file for reading. So we did that two ways. We did F open. The first parameter that we do is a C style string, and that's the path that we want to open, the actual file name. The second one is the mode. RB stands for read for binary. WB stands for write for binary. Be able to read several bytes from bio from a file into a buffer. Remember we used F read. The first parameter is the buffer, which is just a memory location that we want to read to. Second one is the size, and you're always gonna set that to one. Third one is the number of members, and that is actually gonna be the number of bytes you wanna read. And finally comes the file pointer itself. Be able to seek to a given offset in a binary file. Remember that's F seek. First parameter is your file string. Second one is your offset. The third one is one of those three whences. Seek set, seek cur, or seek end. 
be able to write several bytes to a binary file from a buffer. We did that as well with that my struct. And you use f write, first parameter is the buffer where in memory you want to write. Second one is the size, you're always going to set that to one. Third one is the number of bytes you want to write. And finally comes the file pointer. Be able to get the size of the file by seeking the end of the file stream. So we just did that. You open the file for reading. You seek end with an offset of zero, and then you do an F tell, and it tells you, hey, this file is 24 bytes, or whatever the size of the file is. And be able to tell where you are anywhere in the file string. That's just simply an F tell. So that's binary files. There really is no magic to this. It's just being able to keep up where, okay, where am I inside this file? What does this file look like? That sort of stuff. And so you have to learn the specification, like an MP3 file, that was one, a WAV file, that was another, a bitmap file. There's many different labs that I have floating out there, but I don't know which one your class is going to get. But you have to know that somebody put a structure to the bitmap. It's not a text file where one byte now is one character. Instead, now you have to be able to seek your way through the file to read or write specific pieces of information. So that's binary files. Thanks for watching.